And so we're going to welcome Alex Zeitz. He is the director of crew and sailor experience at Virgin Voyages. So he is the man that knows everything about everything. <laughs> yes, I'm so excited to be here with you guys tonight. And so where are you watching or where are you joining us from today? Yeah, I'm actually I'm at home in New York City. Uh, you know, although our company's based in South Florida, I am I'm the luxury of living up in New York because I'm always on the road checking out our ships, looking where they're going to be going in the future. Um, so it's nice that I am actually able to live come anywhere in the world. Ah, that's very nice. I noticed you guys, in fact, I looked at the 24-25 itineraries and I noticed you got some out of uh, sailing out of Great Britain. Yeah, so we're excited to return to our first home of Portsmouth in the south of the UK. Um, some great itineraries um, that will be touching some new locations such as Morocco, which I'm really excited to get our sailors to. Um, but there'll be some short ones, there'll be some long ones. Um, you know, Next year, we'll be returning back to Barcelona, to Athens, and continuing on some of the amazing journeys that also start in Miami. So a lot of great new places, as well as kind of, you know, where I'm excited to get going soon in December, we'll be in Australia from uh, Melbourne and, and uh, Sydney. So a lot, a lot of fun places coming up. Yeah, that is so cool. Uh, um, for us, uh, Sydney's kind of out of reach because my wife has trouble flying. She has a, her back's fused and mm. you know, about four hours is about all the time she can stand sitting you know, upright without getting off. So Yeah, well, there's and some great things for my to Australia to get off. <laughs> yes. <laughs> But oh, we have some of our regular viewers here have a comment. Pam says she's been trying to find us on Saturday night by by mistake. So <laughs> tonight she's got us right on there. Perfect. Okay. And uh, then um, she says hello, and Rhonda says hello to Pam. Yeah. And, and, and by the, by the way, um, Pam, there, there is a clue here <laughs> because the show is Sunday night live. <laughs> Saturday Night Live is a TV show, and that's on Saturday night. But when it says Sunday Night Live, it's probably on Sunday night. <laughs> oh, uh, I've got to give them a little bit of a hard time. Okay, so let's start out. Let's talk about accessibility features. Uh, yeah. In the staterooms and suites. Yeah, so I think, you know, one thing that I always encourage our, our sellers to really be very clear and upfront and forward with us, right? This last few months, I would say actually it's been about four weeks now, um, we've launched our accessibility website. And at that website, there's a great place where sailors can actually kind of take a peek and get the further details. But we have two different categories of, of suites and uh, cabins, or as we call them, quarters. Um, but there's the fully accessible cabins, and then we have the ambulatory cabins. And so what I really want to make sure our, our, you know, our future sailors, as we call our customers, that they understand kind of the, the differences in the two, right? So the accessible, you know, the entryways are much larger. Um, they're step-free bathrooms. Um, they're, you know, really accessible routes to and from throughout the room. Um, you've got the open bed frame, which I think is a very important thing in the, in the fully accessible cabin, um, as, as well as the ramped balcony thresholds, right? So to go out onto the sea terrace, um, which many people love to enjoy, um, yeah. we've definitely made sure that we have the integrated ramps that are built into it. Um, and that's in the fully accessible cabin. The ambulatory cabins, really, the, you know, the big thing on there is how the bathroom is designed. And they're, they're really, you know, kind of someone who may, maybe is a wheelchair user, um, potentially for a short term and not all the time, um, and or someone who might be using a cane or a walker. Um, so definitely give more space, more access, and they're designed with all that in mind, as well as the safety features um, and the, the bathroom area things. But again, if someone's looking for that full um, roll-in, you know, kind of 60, 60 by 60 inch, diameter turning space, then I would definitely recommend that they get a fully accessible cabin or suite. Yeah. And I'll say, I haven't, we haven't sailed in an accessible suite, but we sailed in um, the, actually on both the times it was on deck 12, I think it was okay. sides of the ship maybe, mm -hmm. you know, but right there about midship. And yeah. both of those cabins have been really nice. Uh, we have found, we just didn't find any issues um, uh, with it. I was, we've been really happy. I think it's something we really tried to focus on from the design perspective, right? I think that the great part is they're brand new ships, and so we can design them the way we want them to be. We're not retrofitting something. From the beginning, we thought about what type of things and needs will our customer or our future sailor want um, and make sure that we put them in them from the beginning. Yeah, yeah you, you guys, and you guys have done a really nice job of that. Um, you know, and a lot of cruise lines do a really good job. But we've had one that is not my favorite cruise line because uh, <laughs> to get out to the ramp, they're – way of fixing it was they had like a wooden ramp that went up to get to the balcony level oh, but yeah. the bed was jammed right up there by where that is so when i got out of the bed my stubbed my toe just about every oh, night and, and i'm like 
It just makes me cranky when I stub my toe. Well, yeah, you definitely don't want that. And I think that's what comes in right with all the retrofitting of the old ships. Where for us, it was a brand new vessel, thinking about it, how does it design into it? So I think for us, it, you know, as you saw, it's quite smooth and easy to, to kind of transition from inside to outside and around the bed as well. Yeah, it's very yeah. nice. And we had some comments here. And yeah. then um, are there any accessible cabins for singles? Well, one of the things about Virgin Voyage is we've actually priced out our experience for, for singles. So right now there's a lot of single supplement, no, no paying additions, um, as well as the rooms are designed to be however you like them to be. So I would definitely recommend that, that Rhonda kind of take a peek at some of those good sales that are going on, um, good offers uh, where there's no single supplement. Um, and, and then the size of the rooms kind of just vary. So um, we do have some, some single cabins. Um, but I'm not 100% sure which ones are accessible. We do have accessible ones within almost all the categories, making sure that our sailors have access. Yeah, as, as tight as the, as the singles are, you know, it would be uh, the ones I've seen anyway, because we did, um, this was on Valiant Lady, we just did a, a cabin crawl for a group of us that were traveling, you know, that, that had connected online. So we went around and looked at everybody's uh, cabins just to see what they were like. And... But it, overall, I really like Virgin Voyages. I really, I really enjoyed the ships a lot, and um, and they're just so modern. It was with all the plugins for charging, and everything. it was just, it was very nice. Yeah, so like, we just like kind of, you know, I mean, that's the thing we call it. Like we designed it for it, right? Not only we call it adult by design, but just everything we kind of go through. And we really think about, you know, what does the customer want? People like me go through and go, what, what would I like if I was here? What, what does the data tell us that our, our future customers want? And so that's how we oh, get to amazing things. I like the way that the the um, the, the curtains open, oh, yeah. the curtains to the balcony open without pulling on them. If you're in a wheelchair, you can really, you can almost pull them down by the time you get them pulled over. Yeah. So it's very nice and they, they just pull over so nicely out of the way. That was great. That's a great call out. Yeah. So all of the room features are controlled by, by a tablet and or by buttons throughout the, the room. So depending on, on how, you know, the, the sailor wishes to do that and if they'd like to do that, um, there's different settings for different times of day, for different environments. There's even one that's like, if you want to watch the movies, just press the button, the curtains close, the lights go to like that dark purple blue color and the TV turns on and you can select one of the complimentary in-room movies, right? So I think that's, that's great. But on the other side, to your point from an accessibility filter, um, it's so nice and easy to just press one button and the curtains will open for you. You don't have to manage all those things, which again, if you want to see the sea, which we believe you do, because if you're out on a ship, you'd love to have that great view. So definitely something we thought about. Yes. Yep. And you yeah, did a good nice. job of it. Um, so, uh, and, and I, I know I have my opinion, but I'll ask you, are, so are all areas of the ship, including dining and entertainment venues accessible to passengers? Yeah, we've, we've worked really hard to make sure when we, when we bring something onto it, I think that there are, you know, throughout all the, the, the doors and the restrooms and the, and the facilities that we've designed, you know, all of the entertainment shows. Um, it's not just one seat in the back right corner that doesn't have a great view, right? We've thought about how does everyone get integrated to our experiences? And so I, I would say, yeah, well, you know, we've done as much as we can. And if there's something that someone sees and, and that they, you know, have given us a new opportunity to fix something, I take that on my list. I work with, the, you know, a great team uh, on board ships as well as shore to make sure that we can, you know, address something because, you know, nothing's perfect, but we want to make sure we can be as close as possible. Yeah, I was really impressed. We did, um, this was on Scarlet Lady. We did the, the Romeo and Juliet show with the mm -hmm. gymnastics. Yeah, so dual we were reality. sitting down there right at the edge of the mat. So we had as good a seat as you could have in the house. I think that's great, right? Like we want to make sure that everyone is, is entitled to have a great experience. And, and, and there's, you know, a few different locations. But to me, that's one of my favorite spots where you sat uh, for, for dual reality. It's a great show. Yeah. And you want to be in that action. Yeah, yeah, it was it was very nice. We loved that show. It was, um, it was just absolutely amazing. And also, which which venue was it that had like the dinner the dinner show? That one um, was also so inside the manor. Yeah. yeah, the yeah. manor is great, right? Because the manor you can come into it. Um, it goes, you know, there's it's all flat level, um, and it's great because even when it's in a show mode, there's a little step up. But because of the, the when it drops into to entertainment mode and, and inclusive mode, then you'll notice that the floor drops down and then it evens out so that everyone can participate in everything. Oh. Um, and there are certain spaces that are you know kind of unique accesses, and all the restrooms within that that area are also accessible so again trying to make sure that you know you're, you're enjoying your night in the disco and or you know seeing one of the shows that that may include a dining experience and you have to use the restroom they're right there they're they're accessible um we tried to make sure that was right uh, you know the, the one thing i will say and again it goes back to to knowing you know as i mentioned we talked a little beforehand about having you know maybe a map and a diagram because 
if you're in extra virgin, yes, and, and you're female and need a restroom, mm -hmm. you know, got to go clear all the way around the shopping area, but you don't necessarily know that's where to go. Mm. No, yeah. That's a great call out. I think we can definitely, you know, we do have the ship maps in each of the rooms, but I think that we might be able to do, you know, even more so with those or even that departure. But yeah, the, the, in that one deck six area you're speaking of, there are two different restaurants. Again, we make smaller restaurants. So because the smaller restaurants are kind of in different spots on board the ship. And you're right on one side, on starboard side is the men's restroom and, and, and on port side is, is the ladies one. Um, but you, yeah, you're right. If you don't know that they're, they're opposite each other. Um, but hopefully there's a good crew member there who, who kind of sees the person doing the what where and they're like come with me i'll show you it's just around yeah. the corner yeah. well it, the the first time i was looking i was we were in um i guess it was an extra virgins you want on on the other side right it's pink yeah. guavi and extra virgins that right i uh, think uh, it's test, oh, kitchen. test kitchen yes yeah and um i was we were an extra virgin and i went out and i saw the ladies room and i was like hmm, i don't see a men's room <laughs> and i finally decided to go walk around and see and yeah there it was yeah but uh, yeah, you know, it's been, um, you know, one of the things that you guys have that's different and I'd never seen this before is mm -hmm. the ramps to get off the ship mm -hmm. have like two modes. They have a stair mode and yeah. uh, a, um, a flat mode. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's one of the things it's great because it's, it's for, for tender, you know, potentially loading as well as going out, out to shore. Right. So if someone's in a, in a motorized vehicle or wheelchair, excuse me, where they're coming um, to that location, right, they're coming to deck four. What's great is the it, it might naturally be a stair mode because the fact that the, the local land level versus where the ship is. Right. Because obviously the water and the layers. What's great is we can make this to a flat mode that the sailor can then go across it. And then the section of the platform can then be lowered or raised based on, on the level of the land. Um, and so it's, what's really nice about it is it really keeps it kind of even and smooth. And, um, and it's great because when we're doing those operations, most often we have two different locations, so we can definitely take our time and help our sailors, whatever they may need. You know, it's yeah. so funny though. My scooter goes down in the step mode too. Oh, <laughs> yeah, but they, they didn't want to, they didn't want to let her try. And then they got you mad. Know, at some people tell us things, and then we're like, we watch was... it happen, and we're like, is that oh, really what we wanted to happen? So yeah, they didn't want us to take a video of it. <laughs> <laughs> and they were like, hey, this is what we do. I love the no announcements. I think that's oh, my yes. favorite. <laughs> oh yes. I'm glad you enjoyed that. You know, there's a, there's always a common discussion in the office around this, but we're like, how do we get the needed information out? The captain's going to welcome you on day one, and then you're going to probably hear them on the last day saying thank you so much. And that's about it, right? We feel like, you know, um, we like to use technology in a kind of a, 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 you know, think a blended way. I would say that for those who want to leave their phone in their room, they can, right? They're still going to have a great time. They can still ask crew members to help them. They can yeah. still make bookings by going to the restaurant or going to, you know, the spa. Um, but, you know, really we've tried to, to cut down the minimal amount of announcements. We message you. You can message straight back, which I think... It's great from the accessibility standpoint, right? Because there's lots of people who you know, might not be able to go somewhere, might not be able to stand in, in a queue. Um, so they can just send that message to what we call sailor services, the front desk. Yeah. Um, you know, also someone who maybe is, is visually impaired, they can send that text and it comes back and they can have that conversation about, I need help with this. I might be going to here. Um, I'm working with a gentleman who's consulting with us. And that was one of the things he said was great for him, you know, as someone who's, who's blind, is that they can kind of navigate once they have that ability to just message someone. Yeah, oh, nice. that's very cool. And we're going to come back. I have a question about that. We'll come to it in a little bit. Um, okay, the next... okay, our next question was, does Virgin Voyages provide wheelchair or scooter rental? So we as a brand do not, but we have two partners that we work with trusted around the world. Um, and on that same accessibility website, um, it actually is list, listed there. Um, but they're, they're some of the big two in the industry that, that are really available to help um, kind of book, book those for. So specials and, and it, um, you know, it's something I would definitely recommend reaching out to them. They have their pricing because many people need different types and they've got all these different types that will be delivered directly to your cabin. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes. So uh, you, you said something. I'm going to, I'm going to, um, the one challenge with delivering it to the cabin for somebody that's never been on that particular scooter mm -hmm. is um, <laughs> they run into everything. Oh. <laughs> first no, I, first I, driving I, moment. <laughs> well, she's good. She's got she, she's got a Will CI too, and you know she she does does donuts in those, the elevator. Yeah, it's the donuts in those. <laughs> it, it's a little power chair, and it works really well. Uh, we we love it, but. Um, you know, I, I tell my clients if they can get it outside, mm -hmm. that is a better place for them to get it because then they can practice. Plus, it makes the boarding experience a little easier because you've got 
you're not having to wait on somebody to push you. You've got control over that. And man, that's just, that's a philosophy thing, not a, yeah, you know, no, that's, that's a great call out. And I think also, I know some of these companies, because it's special needs at sea and scoot around. Uh-huh. I know most of them do a lot of like even hotel deliveries as well, right? So yeah. there, there could be other things that like maybe you can even get it in the beginning part of your journey. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, um, uh, the first time we had a, uh, the Swill CI2, because we got it from scoot around and we're now ambassadors for them. So mm. uh, it's, a sh- it's a shameless plug. But uh, the reason we accepted that role was because. The CI2 is, like I said, I'm, I'm just completely blown away. Like I said, and you know how small your elevators are. And yeah. she can do donuts in the elevator, you know, without any problem, without touching anything. Yeah, uh, it's a very I want, to, I want to go back to the no announcements for one thing, and then I'm going to pop yeah. up another question. The Putting them on the screens in the elevators. Mm-hmm. That is such a cool idea. I like that. <laughs> I'm glad you like that one. Yeah, I like so that. For those who aren't aware, on board our ships, when it comes to like, you know, we're in a port or call, right? You need to know what time you need to be on board. What, what gangway are you exiting the vessel? Um, kind of what time is the big activation on board? So anytime there's a ship wide, everyone needs to know. In the elevators themselves, they have this beautiful moving artwork that we've hired artists to do. But we do a beautiful thin little layover that just says, today in Santorini, you know, you're, you're te- you know the, the, the tendering is happening on deck four and you need to be all aboard by 10 p.m. because that's we do late departures. And so um, that screen is just so simple and easy because when you're in the elevator, you're like, oh, I just need to go to four and I'm good, then go. So. Yep. Okay. So our next question is, are there accessible excursions available on Virgin Voyages? That is a great question. So yeah, we um, actually have tried in the beginning to to launch our experiences. We call them shore things. So if you hear me say the word shore thing, I'm talking about shore excursions. Um, but we've definitely tried in the beginning to design them. And, and you know, all of them come from being like a, a small, we're, our, we target between 12 and 20 people. We don't like anything bigger than that. Um, and, the, and the biggest challenge we run into in certain places is just the modes of transportation that are available to us. And so what we started to see is that in certain places in the world, it really wasn't happening, right? We would, they would tell us they could do it. And then when we got to the port, it really wasn't happening the way we wanted it to. And so um, a colleague of mine, Natasha Lozado, she runs the, the Short Things Development Group. Um, that We've actually found a partner who specializes in just doing ex- accessible excursions. Um, so this last, I would say, um, probably like three weeks now, um, we've relaunched um, some of the amazing ones. My favorite ones kind of really starting in Cannes, like in France or Corfu. Um, there's an old town tour, which, you know, traditionally in, in Corfu, old town is kind of hard to get around because of a lot of the cobblestone and the different materiality. So to work with someone who really knows how to do that. Um, we just launched one also in Cozumel and Playa de Carmen. So we're also bringing them to the Caribbean. Um, but really, it, it's working with someone who this is their lived journey. And so they're going to find ways to do this in ways that I might not be able, because it isn't my lived journey, but I'm definitely here to listen to them and learn from them. And, you know, now we have a contract together building out some great experiences. Yeah. And I think for me, it's, you know, obviously, you know, my dream state, we'd be able to get everyone everywhere, but there are, are unfortunately are certain boundaries that we just have to work through. And so I think for me, it's also about setting the expectations. So you'll also see, um, we've just done a, a review of all of our, our website descriptions. It'll talk about certain things. You know, some people may be able to transition from a chair for a moment. Some people may not be able to. So we like to call those out. We talk about yeah. certain steps or certain distances that we may go. Um, or certain vehicle types that we can only get access to, or boats, right? What do the water transfers look like? Um, so we, you know, although we, 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 an ideal state would be able to have everything open to everyone, because that's what we're targeting, and we're pushing our local teams to do that and get there. Um, we also want to be as transparent as possible and set a realistic expectation of what is available and what is safe. Exactly. If you if you pay for something and you know what to expect and you get it, then you're happy, or you yeah. should be happy. You know, yeah. Yes. Well, I would say, and uh, I don't know anybody that travels with a disability. I mean, everybody that travels with a disability would love to be able to do everything. Yes, they should. Yeah. But they all understand that th- that's not realistic, you know. And so a lot of times, you know, a good example is we're doing a, a canard back to back. And in a bunch of the ports, there are no accessible excursions. So we'll get off and do some things. But there are no accessible excursions. And I'm like, okay, I'm I'm fine with that because these are little tiny small towns in the St. Lawrence River. And you know, and you know, you got a town of five hundred people, you're probably not gonna have much in the way of accessibility. But at least even if we can just get out and walk around, we can tell people this is what you can see near the port. Yeah. And so we'll have a good time either way. It'll be hopefully we'll have great weather and you know. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, I think also for us too is what we also like to do because not everyone likes to take an excursion or a short thing through us. Although we work to create some amazing ones and connect people to the local in, in a unique way. And we also have what we call our, our port guides. So we also have these unique guides that list out what are the foods you should try, what you should see. And those come in the app complementary to everyone. And so I think if someone is, is independent spirited or wants to go out and about on their own, they can definitely also peek at those and kind of go where we recommend because we've gone and seen them, we've vetted them, we kind of connect with them. So. Yeah. Um, our, we also have sailors that love to do that too. Yeah, and that's really nice because you wind up in the situations where if you if nobody's vetted them, now I, I'm pretty adventurous, so we'll go pretty much anywhere and do anything. Yeah. But a lot of people have fear, and uh, you know, even I sometimes get to that point. We went to um, oh Trinidad and Tobago, and you mm -hmm. know, and that's the the State Department's advisory was pretty strong on that, and you know, I couldn't find anything that was accessible, and couldn't find. You know, I got a lot of bad stories about what happened. So I'm like, okay, we'll just stay on the ship here. Yeah. I mean, each location, you know, you got to know what you want to do and how you're going to do it and, and what it, what's right for you. So I think that's important to do your research and how you want to do and how you want to explore. Yeah. Yeah. The great thing about a cruise is you don't have a bad day because the, the ship is a destination itself. <laughs> um, one more quick question on, on, do you have any, any places that the tenders are accessible? So um, we work through a lot of different locations and I would say um, we ask every location to provide us those, you know, so that's something that's one of the first questions we ask um, when we try to get that confirmation ahead of time. Um, I would say definitely, um, you know, when we are in um, Cozumel, they, you know, they are much more accessible there, the ramps, the access to them, to and mm -hmm. from, because we offer, as part of our experience, we offer um, access to Playa del Carmen on the other side complimentary. Um, so you don't have to buy all those things or manage all those things. We have private transfers that go. So oh. those um, tenders are. Um, we also work, you know, in some of the locations, but then it's also what the, what, what's on the other side. You know, so it, it's it's the connection. It's kind of not just what it is from exiting our vessel, right? Because, you know, we have some of the lifts and some of the connection and activity. It's the tender provided by the local area. And then it's what that dock looks like. Um, and for example, a place like Santorini, then you then have to transfer into, you know, a funicular, which those are now accessible, which is what I'm really excited about that they've done that. But that docking space, sometimes they do have transitions. So it depends on the ability of the person, um, what their chair size is like. Um, and if they do, um, you know, transfer or not transfer. So there's lots of layers to it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, very good. I appreciate okay, that. Calm. So now, what are Virgin Voyages policies for passengers traveling with service animals? Oh, that's a great question. Um, so, you know, it really it, the, the regulations that we are definitely welcome service animals on board our ships, right? If someone is in the need of a service animal, we want to make sure that they have what they need. Um, we definitely have the relief areas for the animals themselves. Um, the big thing I always like to stress for, for our sailors is that, um, you know, while we may embark in the U.S. where there's lots of access and movement and, and, and understanding of that, um, when we go into different ports around the world, we want to make sure that our, our sailors or our customers have the right documentation. And, that, and I like to be clear, it's not the documentation that you need the animal or not need the animal, is that that animal is cleared to travel to different countries, right? Yes. Yeah. You know, people think I'm going on the cruise, it's great, it's fun. But every port we go into potentially is a new country and each country has regulations on bringing animals in. And although you know your dog has been, you know, all going through all the vaccinations and has all the certifications, all the things, this official who's who's coming to see our vessel, all they do is get a manifest that says there are three people with dogs on board and here are the, the requirements of the, each country. So one of the things I've also put onto our um, website is just links to those requirements because often um, not only in the US, but like, you know, if you're flying to join our ship in Dubai or in Singapore or in Sydney or Melbourne, right, you have to travel with your animal and I would hate for you to get denied boarding before you even get to us, right? Um, yeah. So one of the things we've definitely have there on, in the service animal section, um, there is um, probably what eight links here, the US Department, the UK, European Union, Australia, I'm just taking a peek here, New Zealand, uh, um, UAE and Singapore. So each of those countries have requirements on breeds of dogs, on certifications, on certificates. Um, and so what we may be used to in our home country might not be what we're going to. Um, so long story short, Virgin Voyages were very, were they very welcome on board, but I want to make sure that our sailors know that there are some requirements that aren't just us making the rules. It is something that actually is required. But I think the, the, as the thing I was saying, right, is that it's just so important to understand those uh, and make sure that, that, that our, our customers, our sailors know them 
And also, if there's any you know questions on that, we also encourage anyone who's bringing a you know a service animal um, or a service dog on board um, to fill out the special services request form, because uh, by doing that, then we'll be able to actually prepare for that in the sense of making sure that we have all the relief area set up and all those things, and, and making sure that we also are looking for and helping the sailor look for those forms that they need to complete, um, so that they don't run into any challenges. So it's a great yeah. question. And honestly, you guys, uh, that's farther than most of uh, the places that I've talked to go. Most of them, you know, tell them that they need to put it, kind of put it on the passenger to check. But, you know, having where, what you've done of having links to all the places where you might embark or disembark, that's really very, very nice. Yeah, I think. The next question is, um, does Virgin Voyages offer accommodations for passengers with hearing or visual impairments? We touched on it a little bit. Yeah, um, of course we do. Um, we have lots of, you know, facilities that, that are kind of for, for, for both audiences. I would say for those who, you know, um, are deaf or hearing impaired, um, we've got a lot of different things from, you know, the, the the safety videos. I'm sure you remember that safety video. It's not the standard same old, same old safety video. Yeah, it's not, <laughs> definitely. Um, but we definitely have that caption to make sure that's set in there. Um, when those sailors also go to those things, the, the, the safety drill location, um, we definitely have teams that can assist with them. Um, if someone is looking to have an ASL interpreter, um, we ask that they let us know as, as soon as advance as possible so we can make those arrangements for them. Um, but we will do that on departures from the United States and um, have a, an ASL interpreter. Um, we, you know, traditionally ask for 45 days notice, but not everyone plans theirs that way. And so if they, they do do it in that time period, we'll work our, our you know, our best to do that. Um, we also have assisted um, devices. So from uh, for, from all of the kind of entertainment perspective in our main areas, I know we talked about the manor and the red room, yeah. um, but the roundabout, also the dock house, which is on after. I don't know if you remember enjoying sailaways in the dock house. <laughs> I didn't sail away there, but I the shrimp on the Barbie were really good back there. There you go, see the, the back there. So like the great um, you know Mediterranean inspired food back there, and then the aquatic club, which is the central pool area. Those yeah. all have um, assisted devices. Um, and then, of course, all the movies on board are closed captioned. Um, and I did share about, obviously, the, the ASL interpreter. So I think from that perspective, we have done um, a lot there. We also have the portable kits. Um, so, uh, you know, when, when the, um, the you know, door is activated, um, we do have, like, the, the, the bed shaker type of things that, that really assist someone who might not be able to hear that. Um, yes. on, the, on the visual side, um, you know, what, one of the biggest things we do, again, and this is with the knowledge, and I go back to all these, if you provide the knowledge to us by completing, you know, the, 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 the special request form online, then we can be best pre-prepared, right? So this morning in Athens, you know, there was a bunch of emails and texts confirming we had a sailor who's coming, who's vision impaired, we know their arriving time, who's going to be the meet and greet person, who's going to guide them through um, if they wish to have that assistance. Um, and then what we do at embarkation day, we also, also offer a, a tour of the vessel, right? An orientation tour to understand you know where certain things are how things are set up um, as well as we do have braille and tactile signage throughout the ship um, and really then then to the point i made earlier is through through chat a lot of um you know the sailors that i've worked with and the consultant that i've kind of been you know leaning into because that's his lived journey he's been sharing that if we can utilize that messaging systems because it's so easy for him um, and he said the community definitely appreciate that um, so that's something that we're working on okay well very nice Okay, so now the next question is, can um, medical equipment like CPAP machines be used in the staterooms and do you provide distilled water? Um, that's a great question. So um, they can be utilized on board the ship and, and um, we currently do not offer the, those types of waters, but we can definitely, you know, connect sailors to those places and, and work through. But it, currently that isn't something that we have on board the ship. And really it comes from our, you know, we as a brand don't use any single use plastics. Um, and almost all of those waters um, come from a single use plastic um, container. But again, we would make an exception if a sailor needed to bring that on board. Um, we would definitely allow them to go through security where other times we stop the single use plastics from coming on board the ship. Yeah. And, and what I would say for anybody that uh, travels with a CPAP, because I do, is the water on the ship is pure enough that you don't get a residue. You know, the reason you use distilled water is you don't want a bunch of lime building up in the bottom of it. Right. Um, but I use filtered water at the house and I use water on the ships. Every ship I go on, I use the ship's water and I've never had a problem with, with it causing an issue for the CPAP. 
And I would also throw out there that that um, because we are the no single use plastic on board, we have filtered water stations throughout the ship that are complementary, right? So yeah. you can go to you know many of the key locations, um, and you know a lot of people like like yourselves, you know, have like the uh, you know specific bottle that they utilize to to do that. They go to the filtered water station, they collect it there, and then and then they're set to go. And we have a question from a viewer. Yeah, Zoe says, "Is the are there bedside tables?" And she needs one for her medication, and so does her husband. Yes, that's a great question. Um, we do have the bedside tables. Um, there are some that are built in and there are some that are actually movable. So um, depending on how much space or how many items you may need, um, we do have those. Um, and it does slide underneath the bed. So it actually can be quite close uh, um, to the person who may need that. Okay. And then this one's kind of an obvious question, but are there accessible restrooms available throughout the ship? We kind of touched on that too. Yep, they're throughout the vessel. You'll see on our ships, um, the icon for a restroom for us is not a... It's not a man or woman. They're actually mer people, a mer man or mer, or mer lady. Um, but we also do have one that is uh, an accessible one. And I really want to call out the fact that we we specifically selected the wheelchair um, icon that is more the, the, the progressive one, right? That's moving forward, that's active, because that's how we see our sailors and we see them being able to navigate and be independent. And so we've purposely, because um, as part of my job, we, we you know we work on what does the experience feel like? And, and there's the team, um, a colleague of mine, Julian, um, he was very impressed by the design, so we wanted to make sure we embraced it. Okay, let's say now the next question is, does Virgin Voyages provide any additional accessibility services such as priority boarding or disembarkation for passengers with disabilities? That's a great question. So we've really tried to make our full experience as accessible as possible so that we don't have to have a special route or we don't have to, you know, do any any uh, front of queue things. Um, but of course, if someone, you know, has reached out to us and shares information, we will do our best to accommodate them in the, in the best way that they may need. Um, but I will call out that everywhere we've designed everything, everything is wide enough for someone in a chair to go through. Um, if there is someone who, you know, is visually impaired, we design it in a way that they can cut, we can adjust something or change something to navigate it. But um, my whole thought is when you create something from the beginning to have everyone have a feeling and have a journey, like I know you guys went to the beach club, I think probably in the Bahamas, right? You, yeah. You know, the ramp, you, you, did you notice how the first thing you come into is a bunch of ramps, so you, everyone comes to that height and you can see the whole beach and, and it gives that aha moment, right? That's designed purposely. And then all you have to do is either go down left or right, one side is stairs and one side is a ramp, but it brings you right back to the centralized area. So when it came to how, you know, Dee Cooper and her team really designed everything, it was really about how do we make it inclusive from the beginning and how do we take everyone on that same journey? So there really isn't a need to do any of these priority moments or not. Yeah. yeah, and then I want to mention that when on the embarkation, I just love it if you get there early, you're not stuck in a room with a hundred other people yeah. waiting. Yeah. I mean, because you can go shopping for a while, you know, with the yeah. little uh, you have the little shuttle that takes you over yeah. to the shopping or whatever. I, anyway, I just felt that the embarkation went very smoothly, quickly. It wasn't, um, I don't know, it, it was really nice, and I don't feel that. Like sometimes if you're in a walker or a wheelchair and there's big crowds, you feel like you're going to run over somebody or somebody's going to knock you over or something. Yeah. I did not get that sense when I was through the whole embarkation process with Virgin. Well, I, and, I, and I appreciate that. And thanks for calling that. And I would say the biggest thing is we also do a, a selecting of the arrival time, right? So each sailor, as part of their online check-in, a ready-to-sail process, they select an arrival time. And so for me, it's like the simplest concept. If you select to arrive at, at, at you know, 2 o'clock, then you should be showing up at, at 1.45 for your two, right? If you select arrival time of 4 p.m. and show up at two, guess what? It's two and it's not 4 p.m. And yeah. so, you know, there might be some waiting to do, but if you show up at that time, um, you're, you know, you're, you're, you're more than guaranteed to get on and, and kind of that, have that smooth arrival experience, which to your point, then you don't have cues, then you don't have waiting around, then you don't have standing if that's not something that you can do. So one of the things we tried to do is if, if sailors come to, to us at the right time, we prioritize them, we get them through. If they come early or late, out of those times, we say, as soon as we can get you in, we will. But we're prioritizing the person who did their homework and showed up on time. Yeah. Yeah. And it works very, it works very well. I, I was going to say, I love the terminal in, in Miami, too, because, uh, you know, again, one of the things, because I'm a, I'm a geek, I carry electronics with me. Yeah. And, and there's lots of places to get power while you're waiting, you know, yeah. and it, it's spread out and more couches and, and less chairs and. You yeah. know, so that to me is a, a very uh, comfortable experience. And I, I, like I said, I love having the power. It's just like on the ship, though. Everywhere you look, there's. Uh, it's not hard to find power for your laptop or power for your, um, you know, your yeah. phone or whatever it is you're using. Yeah, uh, I think it's important. Sometimes on ships, 
you know, I carry a converter, you know, and then I'm looking for where they plug the vacuum in and sitting on the floor <laughs> so I can get power to charge my thing. Yeah, and I think for us, right, uh, you know, myself and Dee and there's a person by the name of Gabby, all three of us worked on, uh, on the concepts and the design and the delivery of Terminal V, and, um, as well as a colleague of mine the name Jose from the operational side. And we've all come together. All of us travel all the time. You know, you, before we, we, we you know, went on today, we chatted about that I'm always on the road, right? I, I've been in that airport that has amazing experiences. And I've been in that airport that I'm like, where is the power? We all have laptops and phones and cameras. And so we thought about that in the terminal, even though, as you saw, you don't have to wait a lot in the terminal. You're kind of continually going through. Um, you know, sometimes I actually find people, I'm like, you can go on board. It's open boarding. They're like, no, no, we're just getting a, you know, our last email and we're closing our laptops so that when we go on board, we're on vacation. But um, we designed it in a way that whatever you wanted to do, you can definitely have that. Uh, and that's definitely something that's there. Yeah, that's very nice. Um, okay, the next question says, what is the procedure for requesting specific accessibility accommodations yeah, so the, one of the best things, you know, and, and we've kind of streamlined it, is really going on virginvoyages.com backslash accessibility. On there, you'll be able to click the, you know, the special request form. Uh, and it's that special services request form. Really, there's, that's where you can go through and give us more specifics. Um, it's, a, it's a secure form, so it comes to us. Um, and I'm really proud that our team has grown, right? From my side, I'm really about the experience development and how does it feel and how do we connect everyone and how everything kind of come together. Um, but I do have a, you know, a manager of accessibility starting um, on the 10th of October, as well as we do have a specialist who already works through all these things. So when that form comes in, she'll reach out and kind of say, this is what I know, this is what we have, does this meet your need, does this not meet your need? Um, and oh, they might ask you the simple question of how do I meet your need? I'm not familiar with what that is. Please help me and we'll help you. Okay, I want to go back to to um, uh, the Bimini Beach Club uh, yeah. for one thing. The one suggestion I have, I love the fact you have Moby Maps. Yeah, thank but you. But you know what you lack there? And this is a suggestion. Yeah, I'm always up for suggestions. Um, they have beach wheelchairs that let somebody that's in a wheelchair actually go in the water. You know, because a lot of them are wheelchair. set up so high they're not stable. I was on another uh, cruise line's private island, and they had two different kinds. And I put Cheryl in them and pushed them out into the water where – and we decided pretty quickly that neither of those was suitable for being in the water. But we were in um, Barbados. Barbados, and there we rented one, and it, it's got, like, floats under the arm. And, I mean, the only thing for Cheryl was a little bit low. But other than that, she sat down in it, and I just pulled her out into the water, and she could float and really okay. enjoy the experience. And then no, that I love that. I love that. Another question, that. and I didn't ask this, is uh, on Bimini, are there uh, pool lifts for the pools on Bimini? Yeah, so in Bimini, there are lifts for the pool there on both the sides. Um, and we do have actually four water wheelchairs on board, I mean, on, on the island itself and in the Bimini the Beach Club. And there's two different models. So I would love for um, you to send me the information on the one that really worked well, because um, I'm in the process of, of just, you know, doing my annual kind of purchasing. Um, so I'd love to take your suggestions. But we did do one that's more sitting up and one that's more reclined so that that, that kind of easing into water was a little simpler. Um, from when we worked with the consultant, but I would love to hear the ones that you're recommending because if there's something better, I want it. Okay, so now that, that's interesting, and maybe I just just because I didn't ask, I didn't I didn't either see the the lift or and I didn't know about the beach wheelchairs. So again, it's just one of those things about making sure that that you know that, and that's why we're. Yeah. On conversation. No, I think it's great. And I would say if there's any questions when you're at the Beach Club at Bimini, um, in the main house or that kind of the entrance area where the, the transportation drops all of our, our sailors, um, uh -huh. there, we always have a team member from a crew member from Sailor Services there. Um, and they would definitely be that person to point you in the right direction to make sure that the lift is set up to the, you know, the standard or, or the right people are there. So, but, um, you know, still all ears on what we can do to be better. Okay. I'll, I'll send you that and we had some comments here. Comment here. Zoe, again, she had asked about the bedside tables, and she yeah. wants to know if they're for sure in the accessible rooms because she didn't see that in the photos of accessible rooms. Yes, no, so the, 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 all the, the side tables should be in every one of the cabins, and, and definitely if there was for some reason a need, I'm sure we could accommodate it. Okay, and Pam says, thanks a lot for being here and for doing yeah. what you're doing. And let's see, and then there's a longer one from Zoe. I haven't read it yet. It says... Um, I have to have medical procedures and medication at set times, one being 1230. I'm worried I won't be in my cabin on embarkation day. And um, anyway, she said um, this could be extremely embarrassing. So um, so I would say that if there are, um, 
you know, definitely a need to, to, to have a procedure at certain times. And um, we also have a lot of spaces and facilities within in the terminal as well. Um, you know, both all the locations around the world that we do do have um, our, our operations, um, we would definitely make sure we can accommodate because um, we usually don't start embarkation until two. Um, so at that one thirty time, I wouldn't want to to, you know, say that we could accommodate something that I, I don't know we could unless it's something that, you know, is done within that terminal space. Yeah, and um, if they needed like a private room in the terminal, like to take course. an injection or something, that would be uh, of course possible. we have. Yep, there, there, we have. Um, you know, definitely in, in, in Terminal V in Miami, um, we have multiple single, uh, multi-gender, and, and accessible bathrooms. Um, but there also, of course, we have specific spaces that the team would be able to accommodate. And really, any one of our places, we have. You know, our, our we call them our angels or our check-in team, our agents, um, and, and the leadership's team. They would definitely be able to guide to a spot that would be private if that's what is, uh, is always looking for. Okay. Yeah, very nice. All right, let's see. Then we have, um, Travis says, um, to thanks. And um, let's see, here's another suggestion from Pam. Another suggestion would be um, posts that oh, lead to the water. Mm. Um, she can walk on the mat. Oh, if she has something to lean on. Oh, yeah, so maybe like a railing along the movie mat. Mm, I think right. that's something we could... We can look at it. The challenging, it, challenging part of that one is just the the, the weather and and the the beach area and yeah. like the the making sure that it actually is safe, right? Because lots of times that sand, there's so much movement. Yeah. Um, that unless something we, we you have to go down actually in the Bahamas in that area, you have to go down about three meters to make sure that something is actually secure. Yeah. So it's definitely a, a great long term thought that maybe when we we look at how we can look at accesses to the water. Um, so we can look oh. at that. Oh, I have something for you you should look into. And it's on one of our videos. In Greece, I believe there's 20, or in, in most of them are in Greece, but I think there's a few maybe in Italy. There's a thing that you take your, um, they build like a little platform mm -hmm. and you take your wheelchair up onto the platform and then you scoot, oh, you you slide over into a thing that takes you into the water. I don't, yeah. it looked fantastic. I'm sure it's not cheap. That's sure. like the ideal, you know. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I've um, I was just there last week, and I, I did see something like that, and it was like a permit installation, and so I'd have to to check with our our partners in the Bahamas to see if that's something that we could yeah. look at doing. Yeah, let's see, and then oh, and then Zoe was saying that it has to be a sterile area, so it has to be a very clean place. I guess she doesn't want to. Yeah, so, so we can look with, um, but Portsmouth is, is, you know, obviously in the UK, they're, they're, they're quite forward with what they offer and what they do. Um, and so I definitely think that, um, you know, the, the international terminal there can be something that we look at. Um, so maybe when you when you get into, uh, if you're interested in sailing with us, uh, making sure that once that's booked, you do that special services request form. Um, and we, look, we can look at what we can do to help accommodate and or give you the needed information. Okay. Oh. Sensory. What about what? What do you do for passengers with sensory or mental disabilities? Yeah. So, like, like everything, you know, everyone would be welcome to join us. I think for us, it would just be making sure that we understand what that person may need, right? Um, and I think that's it. It's a, a large umbrella of, of potentials, and I wouldn't want to assume we know everything about everyone uh, in that category of, of you know disability. So, I want to make sure that they would again reach out to us and share. This is what I may need. This is what I may not need, right? This is what uh, you know connection. We might also go through and say this entertainment offering might be better. This one might be not so 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 fit for someone um, who maybe is, is sensory, right? There's lots of lights, there's lots of audio in this one. Um, so again, we go down to what their need might be and then how we can help navigate that need for them. Oh, I have a suggestion too. I believe one of the cruise lines for someone who has um, like either dementia or mm -hmm. um, some type of mental limitation, they have a special color bracelet they wear so mm -hmm. that if they're acting out, people mm -hmm. will, the staff will immediately know this is, he's not, trying to raise attention to himself but he needs to be helped yeah. so i would say that's definitely something in one and, and again when when the sailors complete the accessibility form um that's definitely something that helps us out right because as as crew we use lots of of technology behind the scenes to understand um someone's needs some of them what they, they might not be able to have um there's some allergy information that comes across which i know is not the same thing but just saying we use technology to really help us mm -hmm. so that we don't have to physically label someone um but behind the scenes we can kind of have that knowledge um okay so yeah yeah so um oh, yeah. dietary limitations for somebody that you know i mean the, the, the probably the most serious one's the peanut allergy mm -hmm. because that's typically life-threatening you know most of the other allergies are just 
uncomfortable, not necessarily going to make you die on the ship. So yeah, we don't, we don't want any of those. Um, <laughs> so when it comes to kind of the, the dietary restrictions, um, we always ask that people share what those are with us so that we can kind of guide them through what, what items are better, what, what are the inclusions, what are the ingredients, what uh, kitchens that, that things are cooked in and or potential, um, you know, crossovers. So we definitely work with everyone on, on, on those things. And um, I, I think it's just, we like to be very transparent, but again, we need that information to then help prepare the sailor for that. So letting us know ahead of time is great because then we can, we can, we can tag someone's information so that we all know that. Um, we also then, um, you know, connect with the sailor. So anytime someone sits down to have something to eat in one of our restaurants, because as you guys remember, it's not just one giant dining hall yeah. that you come to. Um, we have six, you know, specialty style restaurants that are included. Um, so when, when the sailor sits down, the, the servers are all trained to, to reconfirm something, right? So I do see here that, that Zoe, you have a seafood allergy. Is that still the case, right? I don't think it would go away, but we want to make sure we're confirmed and that the information is correct, right? Uh, yeah. And then they'll recommend what you what might be the best options for you, um, and they'll make sure that that um, you know again with the use of technology we tag that order so when it goes back to being made, then uh, then, then that's what ends up happening. Okay, oh, we got some we got some odd comments, but uh, it's been a great conversation. Oh, oh well, thank you. It's very nice well, to come here and, so. and chat through and make sure that people know that Virgin, we, you know, we've definitely been working on our accessibility journey and that there's, you know, um, lots, to, you know, for us to do and see and connect with. And, and again, um, I think our experience, you know, from the way the rooms were designed to, you know, um, we're working on how we continue to, to share more with our crew and how our crew can be better trained. Um, but I think the big thing is, it's just, you know, kind of making sure that uh, we know ahead of time that the more information you give us that, that you feel comfortable giving us, of course, yeah. um, it's going to go to the right people so they can help support you. Let's see. So 